I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk, and I'm sitting in Sao Paulo, Brazil, at the home of Modular Data Centers with Marcus Caraiso, a VP of Sales for Modular. And so thank you so much for hosting. No, oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here with us. Yeah, you, bet. you had a long flight down here, so I really do appreciate you getting here on your first day in Brazil. Absolutely. Well, thank you. It's it's uh, This is a sight to see for sure if you've never been here before. But uh, Marcus, why don't you just share maybe the vision about Modular? And it's you know three or four years now that the company has been underway, and you can see there's a lot happening behind us. So why don't you share about the vision? Of the very good, very good. So the main thesis for Modular is very simple, right? If you look at the market the last 10 years, there's been a continuous growth of demand for data centers, right? And every single time data centers more capacity, more density in terms of power. And we, we see a, a big discontinuity between the capacity to build data centers and the demand we see in the market. So we try to address that specific problem, which we see as a very big problem. If you, if you look at what the market's saying, where with AI surge, where they're going the next 10 years, there are figures that say it's going to be growing by 40 gigawatts capacity. Others saying by 100 gigawatts capacity. We do not believe that the traditional way of building data centers can actually be addressed, addressing that specific capacity demand. So that's why we're trying to, to approach this with a different modality of construction. Yep. So the idea is for us to build data centers which are prefabricated, delivered in a more low way, that can be built fast and delivered fast so they can address this specific issue. And talk about the, the the method that you've used to approach the the, the challenge. You know, you you we walked through a presentation earlier, and you showed there's there's several different ways that the modular is approaching this. It's not just like a one one solution fits all. But talk about the differences there. Sure. Uh, if you look at the modular market, it's an interesting market. It's been there for twenty something years, right? Starting with the small portable modular data, data centers, and then evolving into some somewhat larger capacitors. Uh, what we believe is that if you get that mindset and you apply them to much larger infrastructures, uh, so you have to think in a different way. Uh, you are able actually to build facilities who can, who can be flexible, can be delivered fast, and at the same time can be able to address this very, very strict requirements that hyperscalers have, for example. So that's the idea. So we do build the smaller data centers for Edge, for example. We have clients in that space. But our main focus right now is try to understand with what we call engineer to suit, which is the idea that we have a base architecture that can scale up to megawatts. We can match that with client requirements. And then what we do is that we design a customized approach that's able to address a very specific need. That need can be for a regional data center, an edge site with five, six, 10 megawatts, or this can be a very, very large facility for 100 megawatts for IML. So the idea is we you use the same kind of methods, but we actually tune them and size them depending what the end user outcome is. And, uh, you know, flexibility continues to be a really important theme in our space. Uh, there's been so many changes, especially now we've got, you know, a liquid cooling design that there's different companies that are trying to really figure out the, the solution for it. You know, I think it's still a question mark on exactly what it is, but talk about, um, maybe just the importance of flexibility in the solutions that are like delivered today so that they can work for customers today and tomorrow. Sure, sure. David, I, I believe that we are in a moment of, of flux, right? So where the market is changing, new demands are in, and it's very, very uh, risky to be able to, to, to make big investments. So if you think about how the requirements for AI are put in place right now, they've been changing the last two or three years. Uh, it's like 20 kilowatts per rec capacity for GPUs, then 40, then 70s, then 100. Now, there are some clients talking about 150 kilowatts per rec, right? How can, you, how can you build something for the next 10 years if that's the kind of change you see in a very, very short time? So our idea is helping clients take decisions, but smaller decisions, so they can decide starting a facility that's going to get to 100 megawatts, but maybe take, taking a smaller decision for 3 megawatts for nine megawatts with one specific design point and then being able to adjust throughout time to be able to address different requirements. Sure. That applies, for example, for liquid cooling. So we've been discussing with several clients around how to apply liquid cooling. We can tell you there's no consensus, right? Some people think of doing it in a way, the other ones in another way. So we try to be agnostic in a way to say, what's the kind of problem try to address right now? What's your requirement right now? And then we allow them to be flexible throughout time to adjust so that there's the risk of taking a decision becomes a smaller one because we're taking a smaller decision. Sure. And they're not compromising the ability to get to something pretty big. So we believe that combination is pretty strong. 
and we are seeing a lot of traction both with colo clients and also with uh, hyperscalers. Yeah, that's the that's certainly the secret. For those that might not understand Latin America and and the opportunity here, um, you know, obviously we're sitting in Sao Paulo, but there's other markets that Modular is, uh, is deployed in and, and doing work in. But talk about the opportunity in Latin America. You know, it's obviously um, it's a smaller market than like the U.S. market would be, but that's one of the reasons I think people think there's a lot of opportunity here. It's a smaller market, and in addition to that, it's also a market with much less investments. So if you think about the size of the Latin American market maybe some five years ago, it was something like 160 megawatts in total. If you think about just the main player in Brazil is 160 megawatts right now. So that, that talks about the growth, right? The potential is still an underinvest, underinvested market, so there's a lot of room for, to grow for Latin American demand. But on top of that, we see AI as a very, very big driver of demand in the region. Uh, not for all the countries, but definitely for Brazil, potentially for Chile. And the main reason for that is that we are able to have a combination of every inter interesting uh, aspects. The first one is, if you get Brazil, for example, Brazil have the cleanest uh, power generation uh, matrix in the world, right? A lot of hydro, uh, uh, we have nuclear, we have wind and also solar. Uh, and that presents a huge opportunity for people trying to develop AI in a, in a, in a responsible way, right? Uh, we also have a lot of room to be able to do that. Uh, we have people uh, with the skills. So we believe that probably in the next four or five years, there'll be a huge opportunity here in Brazil for investments coming from abroad, for example, for uh, AI training down here. But in addition to that, the ability also to, to, to have very clean energy so that you're not actually uh, getting AI as the, the, the villain of, of, of all the ecology and all that. So we believe this combination is a very strong one. And we are also very focused on here, but not only in Brazil. We're working in Brazil right now, all over Latin America, we have players in Chile, Mexico, and Colombia. We're also discussing with some players outside of, outside of Latin America on potential products. Yeah, the, uh, you know, just the idea to be able to solve AI and the requirements that are coming with a renewable, uh, you know, approach is is unique just because the the AI requirements have gotten so large. You know, as I think we've certainly seen that in the U.S. and, and the challenge there. So to be in a place, I know you mentioned Sao Paulo, but to be in a place just Brazil that has that um, footprint and care, you know, market dynamics really. Is yeah, yeah. We we believe that. Uh we are in the beginning of the use of technology, which is AI, which, which is going to have the opportunity to deeply change all the business that we have in all society. So it's very important for us to be able to address it. But at the same time, we have a, a climatic uh, crisis, right? So we believe we can solve one without getting the other in a bad place. So, so, so we believe, and, and there's a lot of, of interest in Brazil for that to happen, right? So we have a mix, which is uh, currently, just the south of the country, there's something like five gigawatts of availability. There's been this project being announced of the AI ML city down there. Uh, so we, we're probably going to be seeing a lot of activity here in the next few years. You mentioned that one of the one of the key benefits to a solution like this is the is the speed to market. You know, the the data center projects today seem to be getting longer and longer. Just to, the timeline for the power to be delivered. But talk about how this solution, you know, uh, provides, you know, a benefit from a, from a speed to market perspective. The first point is you are able to uh, do parallel tracks, right? If you think about all the complexity of doing integration on, on, on site, right? Uh, getting tens of different teams to be able to address different uh, uh, areas of a construction, be able to get them in synchronicity is a pretty big challenge. What we take, we do is that we take 80% of that out of the field and we do it in this kind of controlled environment where we have the same people doing the same thing in repeated times, right? So, so this allows us to improve every single time we build a data center. This allows us to be able to have a pipeline of things that are gonna be happening. So providing planning for all the demand, all the components, procurement and all of that. And then when we get into the field to be able to implement them as they have been not only built, but tested here, they get there and they're pretty easily uh, deployed and, and commissioned. So, so that's the key idea here. We have, have shown with some of the clients we have that we're able to do that up to 6% faster than what you could do 60%, up to 60%. If you have one defined project doing the upgrades, we can do that 60% faster than traditional construction, right? So those are the, the elements, but not only that, we also developed, for example, all the, the intelligence around logistics and, and procurement 
to be able to have key partnerships and to be able, for example, to do reverse logistics, bringing equi equipment from anywhere in the world. Right? So we can do that faster than, than the providers can do, than the equipment providers can do. Uh, and that and by having many projects, we're all actually able to build some, some uh, stocks which are able to address emergency situations. So that combination allows us to be much faster than doing that on a traditional way. And we are improving that throughout time. So you have the opportunity to every single time, every single data center you build to do something better and, and learn. Sure. So the, for the supply chain people out there that are interested in that, talk about what Modular has done to, I would imagine, like firm up your supply chain and also diversify in areas to make sure you have the components you need. I'll give you one example, right? So switchboards have been a challenge all over the place, right? So uh, many of the projects we see getting delayed Sometimes it's due to lack of components for switchboards. So uh, our engineering team built our own switchboards. So we have our own design. And what we did is that in the same, in the same footprint, same equipment, we're able actually to use three different providers. That allows us to hedge the risk of having one provider with some kind of lead time problem or, or even price and be able to adjust so that we can actually have a very predictable uh, time for us to deliver that kind of component. It's one of the components that we have right now, but it's a very key one. So that's one example. In addition to that, we have very close relationships with most of the, the key providers for cooling, for uh, electrical components and all of that. And that helps us because we become large clients from them and then we're able to discuss lead times and all of that. So that, that's a, it's a mix, right? So it's a mix of building fast, being able to have specific components which are flexible to be able to get, get different inputs from different providers to address the lead times, and then having strategic relationships and the ability to be able to source that from anywhere in the world. Okay, the one more product question. Uh, when you first started building to what you're building now, how different is the product today than it was when it started? Well, when we started some years ago, we had the regular PMDC offering, right? So the small modular solutions up to 20, 10 racks and all that, 200 kilowatts capacity. The very first product we built on this architecture, which is a, a specialized room architecture, was the mini pod that was a 7.2 megawatt architecture with 600 kilowatts uh, uh, data holes uh, that you could go grow on a granular approach. Uh, and right now we are actually four generations afterwards we're in what we call the large pod AI, which is uh, designed uh, specifically built for AI and ML where you can actually get up to 100 kilowatts per rack in a, a configuration with liquid cooling, and that we, we can not only build one of those, like, like you see here, one of those uh, modules in a single floor, but we can actually do three stories. Yep. So you can build, actually build buildings which are 14 megawatts capacity, uh, 28 megawatts capacity by building vertical. So we, we do horizontal growth, uh, horizontal scalability, but also vertical scalability too. Um, when I started in the space back in like 2008, 2009, data center providers were like building the same way every time because at the time, the, the, the industry was really young and it seemed like that is just the way that you should do it. You know, here, y'all have a very like modular approach, but it sounds like you still have flexibility at the level when you talk to customers. And, and so this is more like relationally, how do you work with customers to make sure that you're, you're building what you're building, but you're delivering something that can still be adjusted to their needs. Yeah, we have a method. We call it engineer to suit, which is an, a, term, a term that exists in the industry, but we mean by that something very specific, right? It means that we don't have finalized products, we have architectures, and that means that we are gonna lend that into a specific client requirement by discussing with them, sometimes with a call provider, what are their operational objectives, how do they operate everything they need? And then with their end client, because most of those clients are hyperscalers, for example, that have very strict requirements on how they want their rooms built, their data centers built, right? So we actually match the two of those with our engineering team and we're able to adjust the architecture to be able to address that specific requirement and that specific outcome, right? That's pretty powerful because it means that we're able to, we're able to customize uh, uh, a very complex project, but still do it in a, a modular way, so you can grow it, scale. It can be still scalable. You can do it, grow it step by step, and you are able to address very large installations. So you don't compromise size. You don't compromise the fact that you can actually start small and grow, and you are not 
uh, uh, in any way uh, uh, not meeting what's required from, from the vendor. Um, okay, so Marcus, you've been in this space a long time, the technology space by VM, the data center space now with modular. Um, where is this going? I mean, our space is so dynamic. There's so many things changing. Where do you think the space will be in the next five or 10 years? I'll start with our ambition. Our ambition is to change the modality of construction for data centers. So we see several industries where, on the construction industry, you see several areas where things are being done differently. We believe that on a data center space, things have to be done differently, right? So, so we, we would like to be that, that, that small catalyst that helps the market understand that this can be something different, right? The way to do that, we have to get some data points that show that. We believe we already have some very interesting. We believe we're going to get some others which are even more uh, uh, interesting for people to see, right? So we're going to be in 10 years. We believe that this is, this is just a start. And we believe that we're going to be seeing probably next five years, a lot of deployments for AI ML. That's going to be addressing all the requirements the market has right now. What we believe is when ChatGPT gets to one, five million users in a week, a data center that supports it is built in two years, there's some kind of problem there. But that's our ambition. If you look at what we, are, we plan to achieve next two years and, and next five years and, 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 and beyond, first, Latin America. There's a huge opportunity for growth in Latin America that we're looking into that. Mostly focused on the IML and the expansion of the hyperscalers. So we're very, very focused on that. And we also believe that the, the, because all, everything we talked before, the opportunity that we present in terms of power and all of that, there's going to be a huge growth in the whole region, right? And we as a company, we plan to expand that by, by showcasing some, some important results, or the important outcomes out here to go uh, beyond Latin America into the US and also to Europe. So that, that's the ambition of the next five years. Sure. Well, if you want to learn more, you can get online, modular data centers. Um, there's a reason there's so much noise going on here is because the space is active and in order to meet the demand, uh, they've got to deliver the product. So, uh, Marcus, thank you very much for uh, this interview and discussion and look forward to seeing where you're at here in the next few years. Thank you for your juice. It's a pleasure.